Let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms generally of an eye disease. What can I look for as a parent, as a guardian, as a teacher, or as an adult who says something might be wrong with this child's eye, or even an adult? So I go to the basic, the basic, uh, basic uh, issues. The two, the eyes are supposed to be two. If they are not two, or if uh, one is not there, it means it's a problem. They are supposed to be looking forward, both of them, uh, in one direction. So if one is looking different, then it means there's a problem. Or if, if one is looking outside, the other one straight, there's a problem. If both of them are looking outside, it means there's a problem. So they should be looking straight. If the eyes, any part is not the way it is, if the black is not black, or there is something on top or visible from the black part, that's a problem. If a child or an adult is teary, Releasing tears means there is a problem. If the eye is red, it means there is a problem. If the eye cannot see, there is a problem. If there is pain from the eyes, those are some key identifiers of an eye disease or need to seek for services. Okay. Let's also now then get into the issue of refractive errors. Mm -hmm. What are they and um, how are they managed? Whether it's a child or it's an adult. So refractive errors, I would call them short-sightedness or long-sightedness or sometimes some people can describe astigmatism, ah, meaning absence. Stigma means point. This absence of central focus, astigmatism. Then when we grow older, some people have difficulties in reading and that is called presbyopia or difficulties in reading, those who are 40 years and above. And that is also sometimes in one way or the other categorized as refractive errors. Commonly the refractive errors um, which are important are short-sightedness and long-sightedness. If you look at a camera, they focus somewhere in front of the retina. When images are focused um, somewhere in front, where they are not supposed to be, if they are either focused in front for short-sightedness or the height for long sightedness. A normal person focuses right at the normal place. So if you don't, uh, if you are not able to focus at the right place and you focus in front of the retina, you are short sighted. If you focus behind the retina, it means you are long sighted. You are long sighted. Okay? So basically, those are the two very common. Now, we identify them in uh, simple terms. For example, in schools, when children cannot be able to see the blackboard, it means that they are most likely short-sighted or they could be highly long-sighted. You know, those are slightly more details. But uh, generally, if, for example, a teacher notes that a child does not see the blackboard clearly or is making effort to go and see things, walking to the blackboard to see, uh, those are signs that the child could be having some refractive error. Yeah, And refractive errors are corrected with spectacles or they can also be corrected with lenses, contact lenses yeah? or in advanced situation you can do some refractive surgery, you know what people call laser in simple terms. Uh, people with um, long sightedness sometimes uh, they are not always given correction especially if it's not significant but uh, if they, are, they have some symptoms like headaches and pain in the eyes sometimes that is corrected. I, again uh, the other thing I would want to say with respect to refractive errors is that you, uh, you address somebody's issue according to his needs because sometimes I may be short-sighted but uh, I'm outside there doing a general uh, duties which do not require refined vision. Okay. Yeah. Now for people like us who have difficulties in reading things from near, you give them spectacles for reading. Uh, yes, you can give them spectacles they can use throughout oh. where they can see in front and also read what they need to read or you just give them spectacles they use when they are reading. Yeah, so that's how we manage the different aspects of refractive errors. And are refractive errors for life, like if you're short-sighted and it was diagnosed when you were in high school, does that mean that you need to wear correctional yeah, yeah. glasses for life? Yes, you need to wear that unless if it is corrected in one way or the other. For example, 
uh, if we go slightly deeper, we uh, say that uh, maybe I should say the function of the eyes is one, to see. For the eye to see, rays of light have to be bent, refracted, yeah? What we call refract refraction, refracted. Then they are refracted or bent to a central focus. Central focus on the retina, which then transmits the images to the, brain. to the brain. Now, what I may have mentioned about laser is it, it's some uh, micro surgery with uh, radiations on the clear part of the eye, the cornea, so that you can shape it. That way you change the ability of the cornea to focus. Yeah? You change and you try to ensure that it focuses uh, to the right place. When that is done, then you don't need spectacles after that. There are also other operations. For example, if I need a cataract surgery, uh, cataract surgery for anybody, including adults or children, there's a way we can give a lens, a lens, an artificial lens, which we have selected one that will help focus to the right place. So you may have had some other refractive errors, but since we got an, a good lens, which we worked to see that it focused on the right place, then after that you may not need spectacles. But if you don't do that, if you just uh, use spectacles around, then you may have to use them for most of your life. The reason why sometimes we keep spectacles down is because of our work. And nowadays we will start talking about um, services or eye care services centered on somebody's need. So that you as a pilot or you as a journalist or you as a, a teacher, you get refraction based on what you need. So that's the right way now. All right. Mm. Let's talk also about light sensitivity. Mm. You know, someone may not have a problem with mm. the reading or the, you know, the, the, the writing, mm. but they're sensitive to light. And you will note that, you know, some people will want a particular set of glasses that are sensitive to light. And more so, you'll find, you know, they want it to have that anti-glare function. Mm -hmm. So it could be light in terms of the sunlight, or it could be light that is coming from the screens. And now with more work being done, you know, in front of the screens, how do you remedy a situation so, uh, like that? So I look at that from two, two perspectives. Yeah. First, especially the uh, school-going uh, children or students sometimes frequently would complain about that sensitive to light and then pain in the eyes and headache or something like that. Uh, frequently that is associated with a bit of long-sightedness and uh, since they are students and there is a lot of near work there is some element of focusing mm -hmm. and um, focusing means uh, the lens is trying to adjust ability to see near then uh, refocus ability to see far with that there tends to be some bit of uh, tiredness of the focusing muscles and uh, because when light uh, gets into the eye some bit of that is stimulated it will be interpreted as sensitivity to light yeah? and uh, to manage that and especially if it's uh, intractable you can give spectacles correcting for the for the mild uh, long-sightedness and also correct for sensitivity to light. The other um, sensitivity to light uh, is frequently associated with um, a situation we call glare. Glare is because um, the refraction, the clear media of the eye may be having some opacities. Opacities such that when light comes it is directed into different parts of the eye within the eyeball or in the retina and that way it's uh, and bearing in mind that it's supposed to be focused on one specific point then you see too much light okay so if it is that significant uh, one uh, if the opacities are on the cornea uh, maybe they could do you could benefit from something like um, laser if it is on the lens which is the other media that we, is used to refract you can do cataract surgery or cataract removal and put in a clear lens. That way you reduce the glare. 
Okay, but frequently most people will uh, go for spectacles with anti glare, uh, but that is still. Um, temporary measure. The National Cancer Strategy mm. and Policy mm. um, that was developed um, up to a year until around 2018 mm. laid emphasis on the importance of the early detection mm. of cancer mm -hmm. and a very interesting aspect was the inclusion of you know how to detect cancers into the MCH book, mm. the mother, child and health book. Mm specifically looking at retinoblastoma, which is the cancer of the eye, what are some of the guidelines, um, and specifically the screening guidelines, that encourage um, early detection of retinoblastoma? So, uh, retinoblastoma is a childhood cancer, common childhood cancer in the eye, and um, it presents uh, with a white central uh, patch, or the pupil is white yeah. and if you remember I had said that uh, the, the best way of knowing that somebody has a problem is if the normal anatomical structures do not look the same as what is known. So if there is a white patch where it's not supposed to be then there is a problem and frequently that's how retinoblastoma presents. Now uh, the national cancer strategy and retinoblastoma guidelines we proposed that while children are going for immunization clinics, just examine and see whether the structures are okay. Are the eyes white? Are they looking straight? And so forth. That way, if you are, it will be possible to identify retinoblastoma or the white pupil, and it will ensure that or from the, the advice from there is that when you see that, refer to the eye clinic and then it will be confirmed what it is and then appropriate interventions will be done. Okay. Yeah. We have a mother who's brought their child to the clinic and they are in the village, they are at their nearest health centre. Mm. In the event that you know the doctor does notice something that is out of the ordinary in a child's eye, what kind of support is available? Maybe you can take us through the access um, of health services and specifically the eye health services mm -hmm. right from the beginning of the health center up to the referral points. So what we are doing, we know that um, skilled eye care workforce would be able to identify and uh, identify different eye problems are few. So what we are doing is trying to build the capacity of primary health care workers to be able to identify diseases that are that are urgent and need treatment and refer to the nearest uh, uh, facility with a, a technically qualified person. Uh, and especially for retinoblastoma, we used or we have been using just a poster to indicate. If you see this, know that this is urgent and refer. Now, um, we, one other disadvantage, uh, the eye patients have is that there may not be pain and when pain is setting in it means the disease is very advanced yeah so uh, there is a lot of emphasis that don't wait for anything to be painful in the eyes the ones which are not painful are the ones which are even more dangerous okay or so something like that we uh, try to ensure that um, uh, especially for situations like retinoblastoma no one would go back without receiving the treatment or no one would go back without knowing that this is retinoblastoma, this is not retinoblastoma. Now we have mechanism of ensuring that uh, if one is not able to meet the cost, the basic cost that um, a hospital or a facility may request, uh, we have mechanism of wa waiving those. Uh, significantly, uh, uh, children under five are not supposed to pay. Yeah, but, and so the, the idea is so that they are able to access uh, eye care services. Okay, and uh, what are some of the most common eye uh, diseases in Kenya today? Common eye diseases include age-related cataract. We are all aging and aging we can't stop. And it is good when um, most of our population are growing to be old 70. If we look at uh, statistics, we say 
we, uh, we start seeing most of the eye diseases after the age of 50. You know, it just shoots. And commonly uh, within this uh, age group or this population is age-related cataract. We are also seeing nowadays a lot of uh, complications of non-communicable diseases like diabetes, which is on the rise. Uh, previously, we used to talk about communicable diseases like trachoma, but that one is on the decline because we have put in place uh, preventive measures to ensure that the disease is eliminated. We have other diseases like um, glaucoma, which um, is still a complex issue. Again, also setting in after the age of 50 or as you grow old. So those are some of the uh, diseases, especially I would focus on um, age-related cataract, glaucoma, and complications of non-communicable diseases. Of course, what we talked about, refractive errors, still is a huge problem. But again, present much earlier than the age-related uh, cataracts and the like. All right. Sight is one of our most delightful senses. In fact, one of the philosophers said it is our most perfect. Today, as we go about our everyday, let us remember to take care of our eyes because without eyes, we have no vision. Thank you for watching Wanda's Health Diary. We are delighted and honored to have you today. Have a lovely day.